why this is maybe the worst start for Kyle Shanahan era San Francisco 49ers sitting at two and three after five weeks of the 2024 NFL season, but why it might not all be lost and it might not be quite panic mode yet for the San Francisco 49ers despite the start. Coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers. Your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you as always at BD Peacock at Crocky 209. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate all the everydayers out there and uh, all the new listeners as well jumping in this season on Locked On 49ers daily make sure you hit that subscribe button on youtube or wherever you are listening to this podcast today's episode of locked on 49ers brought to you by game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nfl for 20 dollars off your first ticket purchase all right croc not ideal is uh what a wise man once said about the predicament that the san francisco 49ers are in right now they're not playing their best football they've lost to the two teams they really really should have beaten so far and are sitting at two and three after five weeks. Luckily for the 49ers, they're one of 20 teams in the NFL that are either two and three or three and two right now, including the first place NFC West Seattle Seahawks, which the 49ers are going to go do some business with here on a short week on Thursday night football at the Seattle Seahawks. More on that game in a moment. But my question to you to start this off, Croc, is... Is it time for panic mode right now with the San Francisco 49ers with the way they're playing with two, especially two losses against the Rams and against the Arizona Cardinals in the division are games that they should have won? And how do we think this team compares to past Kyle Shanahan teams? Because there's been some teams that had some stumbles at the start that ended up being pretty good football teams. It's definitely not panic time. And I think the biggest reason why is because, one, as I watch the NFL and even more specifically the, the NFC, I just don't see a whole lot of dominant football being played. Even a team like the Minnesota Vikings, who definitely, like, they handled the 49ers and it probably could have been a lot worse than it was. Uh, you look at kind of some of their last couple of victories and, you know, just – they look like a team that can be had, even though they're five and zero. Watch the Dallas Cowboys game; they almost lost, and almost I know almost isn't good enough, but three and two team. Uh, it looked like the the Pittsburgh Steelers had them on the ropes. They had to convert on fourth down. Now some these teams are finding ways to win, and it feels like the 49ers are finding ways to lose. But on any given day, it feels like the 49ers, if they play the football they can play and just close out the game, it should result in a W. So I don't think I'm watching any of these games and feeling like any team scares me. So for that reason, I am not ready to hit the panic button just yet. M maybe in these losses, and you just referenced a couple losses they've had, uh, they've had three and a couple in their own division. If they're just getting dominated, then that would be an issue, right? When you watch the, the Patriots lose games, getting dominated, I'd be worried about that. Watch the, uh, the, the New York Jets, when, when they're losing, and for most of the game, they just look out of it, out of sync. The 49ers are actually winning these games. In, in two of their three losses, they were up double digits. So obviously you want to figure out how to fix that aspect of it, and that's on the coaching staff. But it doesn't feel like a team that can't win, that can't potentially become dominant down the stretch. They were up double digits in the fourth quarter of those games. And that's why I think this is possibly the worst start, but why it still is not panic mode for the 49ers. They can definitely come out of this at two and three. You laid it out how many teams are in front of them. Um, this is so let's go through this. So the 49ers in you know multiple years have had some weird starts. And let's go all the way back to 2017, where the 49ers started 0 and 8. They famously traded for Jimmy Garoppolo. That was a team with no expectations. And even though they're the worst team, which is why I'm not saying this is the worst team the 49ers have had to start the year. I think it's the worst start because of expectations. Nobody expected the 49ers to be good in 2017. 
and they weren't good in 2017. Then Jimmy Garoppolo showed up at the end of the year, and they won some games, and it's like, okay, this is accelerated. You go into 2018, and then all of a sudden, there's injuries to start the year, and then you fall to 1-7 and seven to start that year. Then in 2019, you get Jimmy Garoppolo back. You draft Nick Bosa. You go get... Uh, D Ford. So you have yourself a pass rush on defense. Now you start to have a functional offense, functional defense. And lo and behold, the 49ers start 8-0 and, and ended up going to the Super Bowl that year. The best start so far in the Kyle Shanahan, John Lynch era in 2019. Um, oh, let, me, let me reference something too, going back to 2017. Okay. A lot of people forget this part because when Jimmy Garoppolo showed up, they, they weren't a good team. But they were on the cusp of winning a lot of games there there was one stretch it was the first time in the nfl history that it happened they lost five straight games by three or less points so that kind of showed you that they were they're close and i, I kind of wanted to swing that i know we're going to talk about some other team but when i swing it back to this team again it feels like they're close unlike 2017 now they like they actually have the guys to flip that switch and make it work 2017 it it took getting Jimmy Garoppolo and a guy who was just able to make more throws, uh, a few more throws per game than a guy like C.J. Beathard. Uh, more injuries in 2020. Niners ended up starting 4-4, four and four, and we're, we're going to use the first eight games here because the Niners have a week nine bye. And uh, in 2021, the San Francisco 49ers, a lot of people forget, were 3-5. And five. and uh, that, that was a team where um, the Niners obviously were – Ended up being a very good football team, and they were three and five. So, can the 49ers muster another win here in the next few weeks? Right, that's all you need to ask. Uh, and then, and then you can go on a run still at the end of the season. Obviously, become a, a playoff team. Maybe not a division winning team, but certainly a playoff team. Uh, more on why this is a worse start than 2021. In a minute, uh, 2022. Four and four start for the 49ers, 2023, uh, five and three start for the 49ers. And then this year it is a three and two start so far. And we'll see what the 49ers are at after eight games going into the uh the uh, bye week. Um, and so again, uh Niners were three and five in 2021, they were three and four in 2022. They've had very slow starts in the past and have been playoff teams, have gone to NFC championships, have gone to Super Bowls. Now they haven't won the Super Bowl in any of those years. Can they get that? Can they accomplish that feat? Could they have the worst start and still go uh, win the Super Bowl would be a, a big question for this team, right? But because of expectations and because of where the schedule is right now, I do think this is the worst start for the 49ers being at two, two and three. Giving away multiple games in the NFC. The 49ers are 0-2 in the division right now, 0-3 in the NFC. And those the, the NFC, the conference record, is the, the tiebreaker. And if you look at the standings right now, the 49ers are second to last in the NFC. Only two teams, and those are the only two teams that don't have two wins in the entire conference. The 1-4 and four Rams and the 1-4 and four Panthers are the only teams below the San Francisco 49ers due to tiebreakers right now because the 49ers have not won a conference game unlike everybody else ahead of them that they might be battling with for a wild card spot in January. And it's a big deal. Even the New York Giants, if the season end today, would be ahead of the San Francisco 49ers, the New York Giants. And they're not a good football team, in my opinion. Cardinals, Saints, who are playing Monday Night Football as we record here. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles, Chicago Bears, the Green Bay Packers, Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Detroit Lions, they're three and one, not three and two because they had a buy already. Seattle Seahawks, three and two. Atlanta Falcons, three and two. So everybody but the commanders who are four and one in the Minnesota Vikings, five and oh, those are going to be teams Niners are potentially jockeying for position with. And they've already lost a whole bunch of NFC games. And maybe the biggest reason why this is the worst start in the Niners or behind the eight ball right now this year, more than other years, is because the game's coming up on the schedule. And the next game, in a lot of cases, is a scheduled loss for a team to go on the road and go to th play Thursday night football against a division rival in a place that's tough to play in the Seattle Seahawks. Now, the 49ers have won a game like this in the past, so it's obviously not impossible for them to do. But I don't think it should be shocking if the 49ers, as banged up as they are, have a tough time on a short week going to Seattle, who's playing pretty good football. And, and going and winning that game. And then guess who's after that? It's the Kansas City Chiefs, who the 49ers haven't beaten, I don't think, since the 90s, right? And so it's very possible that not only is this team two and three right now, we have the, the 49ers we might be sitting here before the Cowboys in week eight, and this is a two and five football team. 
And it's like, okay, but then you can get things right. Well, sure, the 49ers could get things right, but I think the Cowboys are better than both the Rams and the Cardinals, and the Niners couldn't win those games, so why do we expect that they're going to get it right at that point? So you can paint the picture very easily, and I think it's probably, as crazy as it sounds, more likely than not that the 49ers could potentially be 2-5 and five after seven weeks of the season and have zero wins in either the conference or the division which would be very, very tough for them to come back from and would be pretty much automatically losing the tiebreaker in a lot of situations and probably to the Seattle Seahawks in the division because head-to-head is tiebreaker number one and then it's division record is tiebreaker number two. And so the Niners would, it would be very, very nice for the 49ers to sweep the Seattle Seahawks. And uh, the 49ers should have their eye on the West because, again, they're going to lose a lot of tiebreakers unless they start winning a whole bunch of NFC games the rest of the way and some of the other teams that they're going to be jockeying for position with. And some of these teams are going to be bad and they're not going to be tied with it. You know, there's not everyone's not going to be nine and whatever, nine and eight at the end of the year. Right. But there might be a lot of teams pretty darn close. And so the 49ers right now um, are getting farther behind than they should be. And while there's not a lot of teams running away with it, Croc, record-wise, that just means there's more teams that might be stacked up where these tiebreakers are going to come into play. And it's a very real possibility the 49ers are 2-5 and after seven games this year. You you talked about expectations and why shouldn't we, you know, expect the 49ers to, you know, be closer to, you know, 2-5 and uh, around the break. And, you know, I kind of got to thinking uh, with this game because in my heart, it feels like, oh, 49ers, they're going to play Seattle. Like They've been playing very well against Seattle. 49ers should win that game. And after watching a couple of these losses, like, well, Eric, why, why should you continue to give this 49ers team the benefit of the doubt when they've showed you even against teams that they're able to have leads against? against? They lose those games, and then you watch them against the Vikings. And, again, I talked about it. That game could have been a lot worse. They were a fumble recovery on the one-yard line and a Fred Warner red zone interception away from being blown out by Minnesota. And and then again, I think we all expected definitely a better outcome against the Rams, a team that is just as wounded, if not even more wounded than the 49ers. The the reason why they're more wounded, the Rams, they're more wounded uh, than the 49ers because the, the, the Rams, who are missing their top two pass catchers, which is a big part of their offense, they don't even they don't have a whole lot more outside of that. Like, yeah, you play the 49ers and they're down some guys, but it's like, well, yeah, they're down some guys, but they still got this guy. They still got this guy. The Rams were missing seven starters, including several guys on defense, and we can't even name their defensive players. So to lose to that team in the fashion that you did, to lose to an Arizona Cardinals team that had one of the worst defenses in the NFL, one of the worst pass defenses, and you can't figure it out against them to the tune of zero yard uh, zero points in the second half why do you give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll fix this on a short week heading to seattle like it's a the the odds are always against the road team on thursday night games so off top just if you're the road team and it's a thursday night game you're you're likely your odds of winning significantly decrease now you're the road team on thursday night playing against a team that is on a two-game skid, but they've kind of played better football than you. And that's tough because I feel like the 49ers are maybe a player or so away from us saying something different. You know, if they they beat the two teams they were up double digits against in the fourth quarter. Now you're talking about a a four-on-one team. And now we're talking about something drastically different because of how those games have turned out. Can they flip that switch and figure out whatever second half woes they've had against these opponents? Is it, is this a, you know, teams script the first couple drives and they kind of script that first, you know, kind of few possessions. And I just watched, you know, I'm glancing up, see, watching the Kansas City Chiefs and the way they moved the ball down the field just now on the New Orleans Saints. It was very much like, we scripted these plays. They executed those plays, right? They came out, punched them in the mouth. Can the Chiefs consistently play like this all game? Well, the 49ers have done a good job on those initial drives on, you know, for the first quarter, second quarter. But after that, it's starting to slow down. So uh, do you give them a benefit of the doubt on a short week? No real practice, 
you know, no real reps like that. Everything is a walkthrough. You have to fly out on a Wednesday. So you play it on Sunday. You have to watch film one of these days. What days are you going to recover? And then Wednesday, you're going to be flying out to Seattle. There's uh, some some reasons for positivity as well. We're not going to go all negative with this episode of Lockdown 49ers. Uh, and the players weigh in. Mooney Ward specifically says this year does feel kind of weird. And we'll talk about some of the adjustments to the adjustments the 49ers need to make, especially in the second half of games. And Kyle Shanahan gives us the lowdown on injury report uh, late Monday as well. All that and more coming up on the rest of this episode of Locked On 49ers. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, NFL fans, you can start with a big return on FanDuel. And get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. And all you got to do is place your first $5 bet at FanDuel.com. So download the app right now or go to FanDuel.com and get that extra $200 in bonus bets to bet on your San Francisco 49ers. Better odds now to win the Super Bowl than at the beginning of the season. If you believe there is a turnaround coming for the San Francisco 49ers, and there is a good reason to believe. And when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, go check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets at FanDuel.com. So again, download the app, get America's number one sports book, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. So it's an interesting question that you laid out there, Croc. And why do we expect that the 49ers can figure this out and tighten things up with almost no practice time on a short week? And maybe that's just what the 49ers need is to not think about it, is to get out there and play their brand of football, go on a short week. And I will say that while the Seattle Seahawks have played better ball this year and more consistent ball, it's not like they've beaten a bunch of juggernaut teams either. Like they, they don't have a lot of signature wins on their record and they just got beat by a bad football team in the New York giants. So both the Niners and the Seahawks. And in fact, it'd probably be better if the Seahawks could co kind of overlook the Niners a little bit. So they're going to be mad too. Cause they just lost a game. They shouldn't have lost to the New York giants uh, last week. Um, and again, the 49ers can go win against the Seahawks and they've proven it time and time again, that they can beat the Seahawks. And then you're three and three and you're, got the tie, first win tiebreaker over the Seattle Seahawks. And if you sweep the Seahawks, that's the first step in going to win in that division this year because I do think it's going to be a two-team two, two race at the top with the Niners and the Seahawks this year. And then you're rolling. And even if you lose to the Chiefs, maybe you go beat the uh, the Dallas Cowboys. Now you're 4-4 four and four going into the bye. You get reinforcements. You get McCaffrey back. You get Dre Greenlaw back. And you really paint a picture because, again, Croc, this team should be 4-1. and one. This is a better team than 2-3. and three which is why I think it's the worst start. It's such a disappointing start from where the 49ers should be right now. Did they dig too big of a hole for themselves? And do, does that hole get deeper between now and when they figure things out? And I don't know what the answer is, X's and O's wise. I, I geek out more on the roster building side of things and you know the NFL draft and um, less on the X's and O's. Like what, is there something that jumps out to you? Like what adjustments are the 49ers not making that they need to make in games or is it just that they're not making adjustments at all no a, a, a big part of it i believe is execution now do the foreigners have the right guys to be able to execute that i i guess you can kind of question that but i'd say they definitely do now you know against the rams it could directly be attributed to some you know bell ronnie bell drops right just terrible slant route drop uh opportunity late in the game to kind of seal the deal he drops the ball right so it, it could just be as simple as well if it's it's somebody else if you don't have right bell out there can you catch it? if you put somebody else in that position will they make the play but also i saw some drops yesterday you know a guy like george kittle who's been very reliable how many passes hit his hands and and ultimately hit the ground like i, I thought there were quite a few uh jordan mason he fumbled, right? Like these are guys that you're going to be counting on. So then now the question is, are, are some of these guys and not Jordan Mason, I, I think he's, he's awesome, but the George Kittles of the world who I think the world of, and I think all of us, this is why we give the 49ers this just leeway to make some early mistakes and, oh, they'll snap out of it. They just have so many good players. And I strongly believe that, but is there a scenario where Maybe their really good players are just good now. 
Like maybe Debo Samuel, who had one catch, he also had a few carries, and those didn't really go for many yards. Maybe George Kittle, uh, is, maybe it's just not quite as athletic, and he's just, you know, a few steps slower now than he was coming into the league, not as explosive. Maybe things are a little bit tougher on him. A guy who I felt like coming out wasn't the most natural catcher. And that's not that he doesn't have uh, the ability to make terrific catches. We saw him, what was it? Was it the Jets game where he jumped over three guys or whatever game that was? It, the, Patriots. the Patriots? Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen it, but then you see last game and just drops for, and balls in his hands. And it's like, George Kittle makes those plays. So are we maybe expecting too much out of their guys? And maybe they're not quite that anymore. Uh, off so defensively, I do think it's there's growing pains with the new defensive coordinator. Uh, I think it's a different group of defensive linemen up front. I do think the defensive line isn't dominating like past defensive lines. I, I think the 49ers got worse from the Eric Armstead era in the middle of the defense. Uh, Which I think is crazy. I thought, I thought they would actually be better this year. I didn't think they would be better, but I thought you know there's a chance that Hargrave's better in year two than he was in year one, and then Malik Collins would be solid and you, you know you'd be you'd be in pretty good shape. Um uh, Leonard Floyd is a. I, I've been a little disappointed in Leonard Floyd. Not that he's been bad, but he hasn't really, he hasn't made a lot of plays either. And even Nick Bosa. And I think this is part of it. Nick doesn't seem like Nick Bosa as good as he's played. And, and I think this is part of their um, plan. Their pass rush plan isn't to go win. Like, I don't, it doesn't look like Bosa's trying to win pass rush reps that much. I think it's a large percentage of his pass rush reps where he's just kind of playing contain, maybe just playing run on the way to the quarterback and not really just trying to beat his man. And so I think his numbers could be better, but it's not that he's playing bad or anything like that. I'm just talking about, you know, straight up sack production, um, which, you know. And a lot of times when you see something like that, a, a guy that, do I pass rush, do I run? When a team, let's say like last year and maybe some of these previous years, especially during 49ers runs, well, when the 49 is kicking everybody's ass, what do they have to do? They, they have to throw the ball. Yeah. Right? So now I'm just able to pin my ears back, and I'm give you all my pass rush moves, and we see a dominant version of Nick Bosa. One thing about Nick Bosa, when you compare him to some of the more, like, quote-unquote, elite pass rushers, right? And he's in that category when he's on. He's not the most freakish athlete. He's not the bendiest of guys. He's not the most freakish athlete. So now if he has to maybe play honest because, hey, these games are close or another team is maybe winning or the game, the team is having a like drive to try to win the game or whatever, now I'm kind of in this position where I've, I got to play more honest. And maybe a guy like Nick, who is a ter terrific pass rusher and run stuffer, but now I have to play more honest Man, I'm not as freaky to be able to just switch that, flip that switch mid-play into like, okay, run, oh, pass. Okay, let me go. Let me dip. Let me bend around that corner. You know, maybe he's not quite that. So it could look like he's kind of just, okay, let me let me see. Is he over here? Is he over Oh, is it a run? Is it a pass? And he's playing, playing things a little more honest. Like, do, do you think that could potentially be the case? Come on, I watch TJ Watt last night. It didn't feel like he, there was any kind of like, what are they doing? It's just like, yeah. I'm getting back. I'm just, I'm just wrecking shop. <laughs> uh, and I'll say, you know, what's strange too. In both those games that we're really pointing at as Niners should have won these games, Rams and Cardinals. Niners have big leads into the second half, into the fourth quarter. The Cardinals and the Rams both ran the ball to come back. Yeah. Isn't that strange? Teams usually have to throw the ball to come back when they're down. The Rams and the Cardinals leaned on the run game to get them back in the game against the 49ers defense. That just seems well, well, so bizarre. It, it, it does, but there's so much time left. So from that perspective, if, if I'm a coach, I mean, we're taking it one possession at a time. And we get if we get a score here, it's a one, it's a one drive, a one score game. So, yeah, like, let's stay in our offense. Let's continue to run the rock. Like, what thing? Hey, maybe the 49ers think we're going to be passing, so their, run, so their fronts dictate that we should uh, run the ball against that. And once you score once, all right, now it's on. You know, and you have an opportunity to try to start uh, closing this thing out. And, and I thought the Cardinals did a tremendous job of doing that. Next, 
49ers own players think things are going a little bit weird, including Mooney Ward. Quote from him and where the 49ers stand on injuries post week five. Up next. Today's episode of Locked On 49ers brought to you by Game Time. Game Time has a new feature when you're buying tickets for your next NFL football game, college game. You want to go see playoff baseball. You want to go see uh, an NBA game, NHL game with those seasons getting going. Maybe a concert, comedy show, whatever it is near you, you can find the tickets at Game Time and get fantastic last minute deals on tickets and now a new feature called game time picks makes getting those tickets for your favorite live events even easier game time picks filters out all the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets and of course you can get up to 60 percent off those last minute tickets all in pricing when you toggle on the all in pricing features no surprise fees at checkout which i love views from your seat and all of it so take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. So, if the Forty Nineers are to get things right, they've got to. I've called them. They. The, the, it's felt disconnected, and things were weird in the off season, and there was holdouts and hold ins. And it seemed like they weren't even quite as on in training camp practices. Even you know the vibes were weird all off season. They won in week one. It's like ah, forget about all that. Trent's in, Ayuk's in. You go beat the Rodgers. You go beat Aaron Rodgers and the the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. All's good. And then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. You lose a few games, especially a couple that you should have. And the Niners are not in a great spot right now in two and three. And vibes feel weird again. And it feels like that to their own players. Nick Bosa, we talked about it last night after the game. He said that uh, they're not making good adjustments in the second half. So he's questioning what they're doing right now. And Mooney Ward had a really interesting quote here saying, uh, quote, this year for sure it feels weird. Uh, this is what, uh, this is from Michael Silver. This is what Charvarius Ward told Mike Silver after the game. Quote, it feels real, real weird. I mean, hopefully it'll turn around, but it's just real peculiar. <laughs> We've got a lot of talent and we're losing games we're supposed to win. So he said it feels weird for sure, feels real, real weird, feels real peculiar. So, and it's, that's, and it's like, it's the lack of answers too with that quote. It's like, yeah, things are weird, man. I, I hope it can turn around, but we're losing games we should win. It feels like nobody has answers and it doesn't look like the coaching staff really has answers too. There's so much left. Kyle, what's Kyle Shanahan's offense, right? Motion, play action. Not a lot of play action this year. Not a lot of run after the catch. Like, what's going on with this team? It's they're they're kind of unrecognizable at times. We referenced 2017 a couple of times, and one thing with 2017, as it's playing out, it's very clear what the issue is. Oh, the 49ers, they just need a couple guys or a Jimmy Garoppolo for that team, right? But you could actually point to something as to the reason why they weren't winning some of those close games. You know, like, could you imagine if it was this team that lost five straight games by three or less points? You'd be super confused. But back then, it's like, oh, I understand it. I think that's the part, part, part with him that he's trying to wrap his brain around. Like, uh, well, we have really good players. We have a really good team. Uh, on top of that, we, we feel like we have good coaches. Like, a lot of these coaches, they've been here. It's not like there's anybody new like there was with, even you know, Wilkes last year, which Wilkes actually, you start looking at, uh, you know, stats and stuff like that i think he had a better start to the year than they've had this season but you start looking at things and it's what's the issue and and then i think it just goes back to the 49ers have been up double digits in two fourth quarters and they lost those games and it could come down to just execution so i understand being confused not truly understanding exactly what the issue is but i feel like the answer is there Take better care of the damn ball, and we're fine. And, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm coaching. We didn't have a great start to the season. And we're like, look, all you guys have to do, we're talking to my kids, all you have to do, look, this block in the back, can't have it. Got to clean that up. Look, this, uh, you know, holding right here that negates a 60-yard touchdown. Like, look at the difference. Look at not executing this block on the one-yard line. We get stopped. How much different would these games be? Well, last Friday, went to Tracy, played the team. We played a clean game of football. Clean. That was the cleanest game against a team that's solid. They do some really good things. 
We played a clean game of football. We beat them 40 to 0. 40 to 0. Because we finally stopped shooting ourselves in the foot. We finally started cleaning up our mistakes. We didn't have the excessive amount of penalties at all. I, I don't even I think there was one holding late in the game that took away a touchdown that would have made it 47 to 40. So we didn't even need it. But we played cleaner. With the 49ers, you have everything you need. You got the tools, you got the pieces. Got to play cleaner. Now, I would say if there's any question mark, if they want to be confused about anything, is why are the 49ers so bad in the red zone? Because they are great between the 20s. They're top of the league in a lot of categories between the 20s. But they are one of the worst teams. I think they might actually be 32nd in the league in the red zone. That's an issue. And if they're just – even if you – Erase anything else I everything else I just said, but you say they figure out why they are so bad in the red zone, or they figure out whatever that is, whether it's a drop or just a missed block or whatever, and they clean those things up. They win. They win. They win all these games. You, you got six red zone attempts and you're one for six. Uh against the Jets, you kick six field goals, getting down there. Like clean that up, and we're not having this conversation either because they have been really good between the numbers. Now the defense is on – they're now with the defense, you're giving them more cushion. You're giving them more wiggle room. They're not on the field as much because, you know, you're – or they're on the field, but you're scoring, so they have a bigger cushion. Now Nick Bosa could be the Nick Bosa that we're looking for. He pins his ears back. He gets to the quarterback. Like, all those things are available. If Maybe they just get a little bit better in the red zone. And even if they were the same exact as they've been in the red zone, they were still two plays away from being 4-1, and one too. Right. Uh, their kicker getting hurt. If, if Moody's available to kick a field goal in that game, did the Cardinals even win? Maybe not. Probably not. Uh, so, yeah, um, they have a lot of ways to get better. This is too good of a football team. Even if you think that Christian McCaffrey is the reason they're worse in the red zone, they've not been this bad pre-Christian McCaffrey in the red zone. And guess what? They still got Kittle and Ayuk and Debo and Jennings and Purdy and Trent Williams. You should be better in the red zone. So um, go back into the lab. Figure this out. Figure out the adjustments you need to make offensively and defensively. This team's really good. They're too good to be two and three right now. And uh, some really important games coming up. None bigger than short week on the road at the Seattle Seahawks. More on that game coming up this week as we get ready for Thursday night football. Quick turnaround. And by the way, uh, the 49ers tried out four kickers. So uh, more on the injuries and all of that uh, on our Winky Wednesday show. And as we get ready with the uh, crossover with Corbin Smith talking Seattle Seahawks to get you ready for week six. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen. Croc and I back tomorrow right here. Locked on 49ers. Subscribe to this video. Subscribe to my dad's podcast.